The He is miracle food. It's the best for detoxing, cleansing, healing, removing inflammation, and boosting your immune system. It's suitable for all ages, and it helped me out tremendously during pregnancy. Allergen-free, gluten-free, 100% organic, all-natural, and vegan. Talkfordoctor.org, 818-429-1675. Happy found me over the next day. That ain't gonna work. That's a lie. We don't do lies. We shouldn't do lies. Right. Or or half the truth. Definitely. So so what's your uh music now? You still working on music, right? I so what's going on? Man, I'm on the Murphy Lee train, uh real heavy because I, I I really believe he's the truth. And I know that uh he hasn't had his 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 fair due diligence out here in the world. In the industry, and I also know that he's a a person that always looks back and, and helps the next uh person behind him as well. So with me, I'm playing Big Brother. I'm not playing Big Brother. I am Big Brother, but um, yeah. we just moving and grooving, man. We setting up. We ready to relaunch this this project called Second Time Around, and it's really like his his single really answers a lot of this, a lot of the questions that's going on too. So. Okay. Really look out for that. It's Murphy Lee featuring the Hamiltons. What is that? Uh, it's a song called Second Time Around. It's not out yet, but he's about to release it uh, probably in April. But we got to get him back on here when he does. We got to talk to him. Yeah, no, definitely, man. I'm going to link y'all up because, you know, he messed with y'all anyway. So. Word. That would be dope. Um, let me want to talk about your stroke real quick because I, I apologies and, and I'm glad you're good because we had, a, I remember. When we were kids, we watched our grandfather go through a stroke right in the house. And mm -hmm. that was one of the toughest brothers we know. But it took the the ability of a lot of his motor skills, his hand, his leg. And he really suffered from that. We learned a lot from that. What, what were the effects that you suffered from your stroke, if you don't mind sharing? Um, before, it, well, when it happened or afterwards? Or both? Um, yeah, yeah. Take us through the whole experience, if you don't mind. That's great. I never even told nobody. For real. But let, all right. So... It's crazy because I was so I, I was going to Walmart. I love like this mad stuff is dope because <laughs> it's about regular things. Like I forget about like I, I I couldn't go in Walmart a lot of times in this, you know, in his life for I had to go way out or whatever. So the mass is dope. I can go right around the corner and go on, right? So we was going to Walmart, me and my me and my queen, and I was on I was on the toilet. I'm trying to get the tissue. It just felt weird. You know how you take it off the road? Like, it just felt weird. I'm on the toilet, Millie rocking. Like, damn. Like, my hand feel like a rubber duck or something, right? So I'm telling her, I'm telling her the situation. And then I said something like outer body or something. I knew I threw her off. So I'm like, never mind. It's never mind. So then when I went in the room, so I know I'm going to Walmart. It's like a 30 minute drive. Boom. I'm going to roll up. I roll up. I can't put, I can't hold the crusher good with my hand. Right. Then I'm trying to put the tip in the in the joint, and I can't put it in. It's falling. I'm like, man, I can't put my sock on right. I'm like, man, I just lay back down. Like, let me just start. Yeah. yeah. Then I got up and I came in the room, and um, and her sister was like, "Why are you walking funny?" And I'm like, man, everybody getting on my nerves. I'm turning back around, went in the room, and then we went to Walmart. But I was acting funny. She was she was like. She was kind of looking at me like, man, you should, you got to go to the hospital. What's wrong? Like, what's up? You know what I'm saying? So when I get in Walmart, I had some clothes in my hand, some T-shirts. I was going to make, I was going to send her some shirts. So I was going to make them some shirts. I had like 10 shirts in my hand and they just fell out my hand. Damn. And then we, she called my mama, Merv, my daughter, my auntie, make him go. To, I didn't even say no nah yet for real. But she was like, make him go to the hospital. So I went back home, dropped the groceries off. Man. <laughs> Rolled, rolled up again. Cause I knew I was gonna go to the hospital. I knew I was gonna go to the hospital, so I'm doing my man test now. I'm like, let me go use the bathroom and let me roll up again. I did that fine. Everything fine now. When I got home, we still went though. By the time I got to the hospital, wasn't nothing wrong. They had me in the hospital for three days. Did every test. Then they did the MRI. I was waiting on that, and then I was like, I was ready to go. So they like, you got one more test, and you can leave. I'm like, all right. You know, I ain't even put on my robe the whole time. I'm sitting in the I'm sitting in the seat with my you see me jumpsuit, mm -hmm. chilling like that to ask me, am I the, the the patient when they come in? Like that's how much I was chilling. All right. They kept looking at the chart like, no, nah, you should be laying down. Like you don't know how <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Oh so, shit. 
and then I was asking about visiting hours that that third day. I was like, okay, it's twelve o'clock. You know, they moved me upstairs. So I'm like, like, yeah, what's up? The visiting room. You know, the hours have changed from downstairs. She's like six o'clock. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be gone by then. She said, and this was really the first black lady I ran into in the hospital. And she said, honey, where do you think you going? I said, I'm going home. She said, you ain't going home. You had a stroke. Oh, I'm like, I had a stroke. I ain't had no stroke. You know what I'm saying? It just hurt me. Then the other nurse walked in the room and she's like, why y'all keeping that from him like that? You know, they was tripping with it. She was, they was tripping with each other. So the whole time they had me doing all the 50 cent running with the thing on and I done did everything and they couldn't find them. So then they got to ask about my eating habits and stuff like that. And I was telling them and they was like, oh, okay, I can see what's up. That's what helped you prolong it. And then I got to going into my childhood history like, damn, I was messed up in high school for real. I was getting migraine headaches. I had to stop playing bass, all that. And then I stopped eating meat and I ain't had no more migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. So my cholesterol level was going down. Those are really high blood pressure um, motives that I had then and didn't know it. And I got a slow heartbeat. So once I'm sitting at home, stressed, boom, I pick up eight pounds. You know what I'm saying? It's just all that. And it's just, uh, and then mm -hmm. that's what caused it. So it's really about uh, exercising my mind, exercising, lower my, because I'm a thinker. So I got to, right. Yeah. Focus. Like if I hang with y'all, I'm going to be thinking about y'all show tomorrow. Like, yeah. And if he spin on his head, and then if he, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be thinking, y'all ain't, ain't asked me to. I'm just that person. So I, I have to stay away from people. But now afterwards, you know, physically, I'm cool, but mentally it'd be weird a lot of times for real. And they'd be trying to put me on stuff and I'd be like, I'm not taking Zoloss and yeah. doing it. But sometimes I can just, I don't care if I can get a check for a hundred thousand, like in two hours, I can be like a depressed, like it's like snapping at my snapping at somebody or something. Like I have to watch myself, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes my lady will say something, I'll say something back, and I'm like, hey, I ain't mean that. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I don't really mean at all. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not in it. I don't even want, know why I'm unhappy, and I'm Man. cool right now. Yeah, I'm the happiest I've ever been, actually. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That's the real part about it. Money don't make you happy, man. Or not at all. Did Did you um and the after any after effects? You good yeah. now? They say you have to change anything up, huh? Did this any after effects? And did they said did they suggest you change anything up? No, nah, not the people that didn't know me told me I should. I should do a Mediterranean diet, and I looked at the Mediterranean diet, and the first word said plant based. Mm. You, you doing that? Yeah. So y'all, y'all, they ain't asked me enough about that. Was what I was mad at. Word. Right. Like, why are you not asking about my life? You just worry about this check. But it's really, really, I, I, I'm starting to. I just feel like this. The reason why it happened to me, for one, I'm a, I'm a, I've been out here advocating, advocating, don't eat meat and all that stuff. So it was kind of word like i see a psychiatrist once a month all that stuff so mm -hmm. and they almost were saying i was embarrassed by it and i i just had to look at it reflect on like yeah i don't want to say it because everybody think see i told you that don't mean nothing just because you eat like you know what I'm saying? like no nah, they don't even they ain't life you know what i'm saying so really i be it's, it's on me to tell us it's okay go in if you feel something wrong go to get checked out you don't have to wait right when do you get your blood pressure pressure checked only when there's something wrong right so Go ahead and check it, then you'll know how to handle it different. You know what I mean? And all they can do is bill you. Yeah. You uh, you were sitting there telling the story, and it was like, I was like, damn, because I know how extreme, like you have seconds sometimes to get in the hospital with a stroke before you, you check out. But check this out though. What if what if she wasn't around? If she wasn't look, I'm telling you right now, if she wasn't with me, bro, no. I wouldn't have went. Right, man. So what happens the next time when it hit? You feel me? Yeah. Like I wouldn't have went because it was that cool. I would just say, "Our oh, earlier man, it was tripping," and I would have kept it moving. And that's what I don't want nobody else to do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Go see the people. It's okay. They don't, they can't do nothing but bill you. Right. All they can do is bill you. Appreciate you sharing that, man. Let's talk a couple more questions. Um, definitely appreciate your time, brother. K1 yes. on the Hip Hop and Sensor Podcast. Yes, I hit sir. that like button right now, man. Definitely appreciate you. You see me. Talk about that. Talk about your organization. Talk about anything you got charitable going on in your community, man. Talk about all that good stuff right now. Um, 
yeah, I'm I'm building the in and out. Uh, the name of my school that I, that I was that I'm in my neighborhood, my community is called University City, which is U City, which is UC. So our logo is built from that. So it's UC and then me, because you know that's how we feel about things. Um, we're going to press hard on on going before COVID. I was in the schools once a week, just dealing with the entrepreneur side and kind of like bringing back um spirit school spirit like sweatshirts and you know like people at school now don't really claim their school like we claim our school like a gang <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i'm from the city what you talking about you know what i'm saying i'm from i'm from, I'm from this so really it's like we don't understand how much money a sweatshirt sold to a student one it helps dress them and get get unity and two, it raises money for other programs that's inside the school. Now, the thing is, with our culture, we like to be hip. So you a lot of times you have an older person, whether they're white or black, they're designing the clothes. They're designing the school spirit clothes, which is a pair of jogger pants, no pockets on them. And you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody want to go to PE. You know what I'm saying? Like, they want the joggers. You know what I'm saying? They want the fit. <laughs> You know, they won't stitch and they won't, you know what I'm saying, the whole vibe. So really, I was bringing together, like, the whole school and the entrepreneur class and making, like, a fashion show. But I'm putting up money to, because you got to have the clothes to sell the clothes. You know what I'm saying? So I was putting up money to make the clothes and have them, and then the profit margin split with the school. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, like that. And then I'm letting all the students be involved with the fashion show as far as promoting, as far as the flyers, as far as photography, as far as modeling, the teachers model, the principal model, oh, uh, you know, alumni, you know what I'm saying? Just doing things of that nature and just raising money at the same time so we can get these people into schools. Everybody not school driven. Some people need money for their family for home. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like some people behind on rent two months and mm -hmm. that's $2,000 for real. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we have to build on that. And, um, and right now we big on film, like I'm real big on film. So I want to start from.